In a previous Health Tree University lesson, we explored how multiple myeloma can be classified into six distinct genetic subtypes. Now it's time to take a closer look at myeloma that displays the translocation 1114. What is translocation 1114? In multiple myeloma, you know, we have lots of what we call um, cytogenetics and fish testing that kind of tells us what the the genetics or the programming of the cells might be doing. Um, and so one of those is 1114, translocation 1114. And about 20% of patients with myeloma have this. Usually it's um, at diagnosis. So sometimes we see genetic changes that happen over time as patients get different treatments and um, their myeloma kind of comes back and it might come back with something a little bit different the next time. Um, but with 1114, it's one of those things that we usually see at diagnosis and it usually continues through um, all the different treatments we do. 1114 basically means um, in your genes, we all have, every cell has 46 chromosomes, right? And so uh, 23 are from mom, 23 from dad. And this does not mean you were born with a, a problem in the genes, but once someone gets myeloma, for whatever reason, in that myeloma cell, patients had a part of their chromosome 11 on one side and part of chromosome 14, that when the cell was dividing, those two sort of attached to each other when it wasn't supposed to, and then it kind of replicated. How is translocation 1114 detected? The way we figure out what people have in terms of these translocations and genetic changes is usually on the bone marrow um, and sometimes on plasmacytomas that we've biopsied. We are working on blood tests, we're not there yet, but finding plasma cells or myeloma cells anywhere we find them, we take them and we um, basically our pathologist will go through and do something called a fish test that will see what changes are in that those chromosomes and that's how we figure out if someone has 1114 or 414, 17P deletion. Again, these are all the different chromosome numbers that we're referring to. Usually we'll see 1114 at diagnosis. However, the way the fish testing is done is not um, perfect. So, and again, why we're working on blood tests eventually that will hopefully fix all these problems we have. But a lot of um, centers won't enrich the plasma cells, meaning that when we do a bone marrow biopsy, um, they're, it's, they're on slides, the samples are sent to the pathologist, and it depends on how they actually look for the test to say, is it going to actually be um, quality assurance, right, that you actually are finding something, or was there a false negative or a false positive? And the problem is the false negatives. If you don't have at least 10% plasma cells usually in the sample, the test doesn't work very well. So if for some reason the biopsy itself when you're diagnosed didn't have very many cells, or you just don't have as much myeloma in the bone marrow, then we might miss that um, test at the beginning, that later on, if you end up with more myeloma, we might find it. But again, for majority of patients, we, we would be think that it's probably at diagnosis and then it just continues. Um, but there are some of my patients that, you know, we didn't find it initially and we thought the test was done well, and, but then we found it later. So I still test for all my patients. Every time we do a bone marrow biopsy or a biopsy, we'll still test for as much of these as we can. The problem is that you can only do so many tests um, sometimes with the sample. So again, once we get blood tests, I think it will change sort of these quality issues that we have. But um, putting that into context, you know, sometimes when patients come to see me and maybe they didn't have 1114 at the beginning, I'll still test for it to make sure you really don't have it. What should individuals with translocation 1114 know about targeted therapies? The nice thing about the 1114 uh, translocation is that we have our first therapy that looks like it could actually target um, patients with this change, um, with this aberration. So um, something called BCL2, that's just a part of the pathway that's um, increased for the myeloma cells with this specific change in, in that genetic um, uh, translocation that we can actually target that BCL2 so that the myeloma cells are the ones that the venetoclax goes after. So we've had lots of studies with venetoclax um, with lymphoma and leukemia, and it's already actually approved for certain leukemias because it works so well. In myeloma, we actually had a study that included all myeloma patients initially, thinking that it would work for everybody. And unfortunately, it actually didn't work for everybody and caused some toxicity for the patients who don't have the translocation or an elevated BCL2. So that study really showed us that this really should be for a group of patients that have just translocation 1114. So now studies are being done in just that group of patients. 
Um, and it's a great drug. I will say that all the myeloma doctors really like using it, um, usually in combination for our patients who have this uh, translocation issue. Usually it's a second, third, or fourth line. We don't use it up front as of right now because we have other therapies that also work for patients with this. So it doesn't mean that all the other, you know, uh, proteasome inhibitors and imids and all those things won't work. They work too. So what we're trying to figure out is, you know, what combination is going to work the best and, and trying to get more of those options out there. Um, a recent study that was presented, um, you know, showed that it didn't beat Pomalist or pomalidomide and, and dexamethasone. Um, that was trying to get a, an official approval for myeloma. Um, again, it doesn't mean that the drug doesn't work, but because it didn't beat it, which was what they were trying to show um, in the trial, um, it hasn't become approved yet. However, again, we, we can get the drug um, knowing that there's lots of patients that can benefit from it. Is translocation 1114 considered a high-risk feature? Unlike some of the other ones, uh, translocation 1114 actually isn't considered a high-risk feature. Um, so that, that, that's a little bit different than some of the other reasons why we do FISH testing. What percentage of myeloma patients will have translocation 1114? Is translocation 1114 seen in amyloidosis? The 1114, it's found in about 20% of all patients. So every fifth patient with myeloma might have uh, the translocation 1114. But uh, the, the, there is, um, uh, as you know, the AL amyloidosis, which is very near as a diagnosis to myeloma, the expression there is about 70 to 80 percent. So, and there is a target uh, tested in lymphoma against this uh, translocation between chromosome 11 and 14 in the venetoclax. And we try it in, uh, in myeloma patient expression, the, uh, expressing the T1114 t uh, with some responses. What should amyloidosis patients know about using venetoclax? Why the amyloidosis patients respond so well, I don't really know, but the, the, the responses to, to, uh, to this drug with very low dose, not, uh, we use 400 milligrams, the, the accepted dose is 800 milligrams. We didn't combine it with anything and almost all patients uh, responded. How did I know, know that? Uh, it was an emergency, a, a woman uh, 38 years old uh, at the intensive care unit with a severe heart failure. She was unconscious uh, and she w was diagnosed with, diagnosed with AL amyloidosis. We tried geratomumab, no effect. We gave her one week venetoclax and the disease disappeared and we did a heart transplantation and she, uh, she's still alive, she's working 100% two years today from the transplantation. Uh, and it was a disparate situation that learned me as a physician, I can use this drug to, to and I tested it on AL amyloidosis patient and almost everybody with the 1114 respond to it. The, the myeloma is another thing, partly it is only expressed in one fifth of the patient, partly you need uh, to combine it with other drugs, not only the venetoclax. Understanding the genetics of your myeloma is crucial. Knowing your risk status can help guide your decisions about treatment and maintenance therapy, and it may also reveal a targetable mutation. To track your genetic profile, sign up for a HealthTree account. Once your medical records are connected, you can view your genetic profile by clicking the Track My Disease button on your dashboard. You can also find personalized treatment options and relevant clinical trials based on your profile. Click the link in the description to join today. Thank <laughs> you.